Sam Walton changed the rules of the game in discounting. Now today we hear Sam Walton and Walmart, we're like, oh, that's a big company, they got this problem. But that's not the Sam Walton I'm talking about. I'm talking about a Sam Walton that invested 95% of his money into the first Walmart, even though he had friends and family, none of them believed in what he was doing. So it took 95% of his money to start his first Walmart. Nobody believed that he would make it. And yet today, everybody, well, that's, one of the, that's the biggest company in the world, blah, blah, blah. The reason it's the biggest company today is because he changed the rules and he created a culture of leadership. And he built leader after leader and store after store and a duplicatable system to create the empire that we know today. Now, I'm not here to sell Walmart, but I am here to sell the concept that if you're willing to do the same type of work, first of all, get a big vision for what you want to accomplish and create a duplicatable game, create that culture of leadership that you can do the same thing. And we keep talking about a game, but we know if you have a game, then the next thing you're going to ask is, well, what's the scoreboard? How do you score points in the game? Because without a scoreboard, there's no objective to determine whether we win or lose. And we want that uh, outcome. We want to know how we win. <clears throat> now, there's a, met, a gentleman by the name of Michael Gerber. And his book, E-Myth, is one of my top five all-time books when it comes to business. Let me just give you a couple quotes from that book. <clears throat> Michael Gerber said, People, your people, do not simply want to work for exciting people. They want to work for people who have created a clearly defined structure for acting in the world, a structure through which they can test themselves and be tested. Such a structure is called a game. And there is nothing more exciting than a well-conceived game. Now think about it. Many of you probably are working somewhere. Thank you. <clears throat> Where you work, is your work a game? Have they created such a culture that you know how to put points on the game where you work? Now, sadly, the answer most of you would say is, well, no, I got to go in there and I got to do this. And they say, well, we expect you to do your job and do your job. And, and then they have to discipline you. But can you imagine if it took discipline to get a sports team to do what it needed to do? Like, can you imagine if the coach came out there with a paddle and started whipping the players? <laughs> there may be a few that wanted to do that. I'm not going to mention names. But that's really not the idea. A good game should be for the love of the game, that you would go and work harder for the game than you ever would for any job. And that's the same principle. Let me say further. Here's what Gerber said. The degree to which your people do what you want is the degree to which they buy into your game. And the degree to which they buy into your game doesn't depend on them but on how well you communicate the game to them at the outset of your relationship, not after it's begun. In other words, when you're getting into a business, the first thing you got to know is what's the game and how do I put points on the scoreboard? If you can define those couple of things for yourself and the community and the team, the organization that you're a part of, your team will win more games than the competition. <clears throat> Last part on Gerber. <clears throat> part of what's missing is a game worth playing. What most people need, then, is a place of community that has purpose, order, and meaning. A place which, where, in which being human is a prerequisite, but acting human is essential. A community that keeps score, that communicates that score to everybody, and tracks winning or losing based upon the scoreboard of the game that has been defined. You want success in any business you're doing, you're gonna have to ask and answer each of those questions. Because competition creates cooperation. If you want a team that's tight, have a scoreboard and have tight, have a, um, strong competitors that keep you honest. It's hard for you to say that you're doing everything you can do when you notice one of your competitors scoring 25 points in the first quarter and you've scored seven. 
It's hard for you to say that you're doing everything you can do unless you're going to say, well, they're just better than me. And that's absolutely never going to happen here, right? Well, that, if anybody else can do it, you can do it. Got it? That's what a champion is. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's take a look. I mentioned Sam Wall. Let's take a look at Sam Wall. Let's dive in to his business and see if we can identify some of the key points, some of the things that he did differently to take a young man with no connections, but with a big dream, a willingness to work, and one of the strongest competitors. Do you know that Sam Walton never lost a football game all four years of high school? Very few people, I mean, they're like, he said, I should have lost some games. I don't know, we were able to pull them out the last minute. But all of his teammates said, Sam Walton hated to lose. You're going to be a winner, you got to hate losing. If you show me someone that's comfortable with losing, I'll show you someone that'll lose a lot. Okay, now don't get me wrong. Every winner I know loses, but they can't stand it. Remember that saying, you either hate losing enough to change or you hate changing enough to lose. I can promise you, Sam Walton was the latter. <laughs> Let me read this paragraph because I want to make sure I capture all these points. Sam Walton loved giving people freedom, but that freedom came with responsibility. Isn't that a great definition of a citizen? Freedom and responsibility. Indeed, he had two objectives. To develop the culture of his teams through the scoreboard, praise and teaching. Here's what he wrote. All of us like praise. So what, so what we try practice to practice in our company is to look for things to praise. Look for things that are going right. We want to let our folks know when they are doing something outstanding and let them know they are important to us. Well, that's pretty important. So if we find something someone's doing right, let them know. Help to affirm them, accept, approve, and appreciate. Pretty good concepts. Well, Sam, that's kind of naive. Well, what, what if someone's not doing a good job? What if they're doing nothing good? Are you just going to sit there and ignore it or praise falsely? Let's see what he has to say. Walton explains, you can't praise something that's not done well. You can't be insincere. You have to follow up on things that aren't done well. There is so, no substitute for being honest with someone and letting them know they didn't do a good job. All of us profit from being corrected if we're corrected in a positive way. Now let me sum that up a little different. You have no right to expect what you're unwilling to inspect. You have no right to expect the result if you're not willing to inspect. Now that starts with yourself. Managers love to inspect everybody else's scoreboard without ever looking at their own. So let me even go back further. You have no right to inspect anybody else's results until you've inspected your own. Okay? I'm making a lot of friends here tonight. I can never see. <laughs> but this is a big point, guys. A leader first takes care of his own scoreboard and makes sure that they are racking up points so then they can go and help other people identify where they can improve the scoreboard without beating them up. I would never, ever sit down with someone with the goal to criticize them personally. But we also have to teach people to take things professionally. Don't take... A scoreboard, personally, I looked at the scoreboard, it said 21 to nothing against me. The scoreboard hates me. <laughs> scoreboard doesn't hate you. It just tells you the score. You know, if we were honest, when the scoreboard does it right, the real question would be, why are you so hard on yourself? Why are you so mean to yourself that you won't prepare and do the work up front and would rather suffer the humiliation of a bad scoreboard than to suffer the pain to become good in practice so you can change the scoreboard. See, that's big. That's big. 
Man, <clears throat> the attitude's got to be work. If you work so hard in practice, John Wooden used to teach his team, work so hard in practice that the games are like a day off. Get it? Can we get to that level of discipline in our life to where the game is a day off? Because that's what we want to get to. Let's go a little further into Sam Walton's leadership culture. Richard S. Tedlow, in his book, Giants of Enterprise, studied the leadership of Walton. Here's what he wrote. First, he learned all the rules. Then he broke all the rules which did not make sense to him, which meant almost all of them. <laughs> Sam Walton did not become a billionaire because he was a genius, although he was, without question, smart, shrewd, and astute. The real reason for his success was that he had the courage of his convictions. Do you realize that when here's this little, here's this guy with no money, no connections, he launches into discounting against billionaire companies that also launched, in 1962, four companies that we all have heard of launched a discounting model. And you know which one was the smallest, the most undercapitalized, the most underfunded, the most absolutely least chance of making it was Walmart. And yet today, you could add all the rest together and throw in a few companies on the side. And Walmart slaughters them all because he created a leadership culture. We're not talking 10% better here, folks. We're not talking 20% better results. We're talking magnitudes of tens and hundreds and literally thousands of times better results when you create a leadership culture. You know why I spend my life studying leadership and teaching leadership? Because I think it's the most significant competitive advantage your company can have over its competitors. Any technology that you come up with, your competitor will have it just a matter of time. It's mostly within weeks. Any uh, super plan you have, they can copy your plan. Do you know what they can't copy? Do you know what it's nearly impossible to copy? is your leadership culture. That's your competitive advantage. And that's where Sam Walton was able to produce the results he did is because of that leadership culture.